Hello, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on using review tools in 3D Experience. My name is Tim Ramos. I'm a senior application engineer with CATI. I've been working uh, with CATI for about four years now, and uh, for about three years before that, I was working with Honda R&D, uh, designing the bodies of vehicles and utilizing the CATIA software all the way through. And since working with computer technology, I've worked with a range of customers, uh, providing them best practices, training, as well as other consulting services. Now, before we get started, I would like to very briefly tell you about CATI. We pride ourselves on being America's first SOLIDWORKS partner since 1992. But SOLIDWORKS is just a part of our larger mission, which is to help companies make better products through technology. We provide a full product development portfolio and the support and training to make the most of it. This includes design, simulation, manufacturing, and PLM software from Dassault Systems and partners, and 3D printers and scanners from Stratasys, Creoform, and others. We even provide expert consulting and service work using tools like Abacus, Katia, and the latest 3D printers, so you can enjoy the benefits of all these fantastic technologies when and only when you need them. With that out of the way, let's get into using 3D or using review tools in 3D experience. So we're going to start out this webinar by reviewing the different types of interfaces that 3D Experience offers you. So on the right here, we have our native apps. And on the left, in our web browser, we have our web apps. Now, the main differences between these two is our native apps is installed locally on your machine. This is going to be your robust CAD authoring software. So your Katia, your Simulia, and your Delmia. Now on the left, you have your primarily your Inovia and PLM. And that's not to say your native apps doesn't have some Inovia in it, but to differentiate with web apps, uh, it's basically high level access to all of your data and allows you some functionality within that high level access. And what's more is within web apps and with the interconnectivity that 3D Experience offers is that all of your data is interconnected. So if I was to take this part and write up a design review on it or a markup, I could save that to that part specifically. And it's either attached to the part, so we have that history, or I can even go another step and put this on a issue or a change action and then forward that responsibility to another user. And then upon forwarding that responsibility, all those metrics are tracked. So when that issue is created, when it was resolved, that's all captured in metrics and added into a schedule. So that being said, we're going to spend the majority of this presentation in our web apps so we can go and look at it from a high level view. So we're going to start out in our dashboard. And what a dashboard is, it's essentially a customizable page per, for each user. So I can, as a user, I can go and make a new tab or a new dashboard by simply clicking this plus button. Then I could rename it by either right-clicking, hitting rename, or clicking the name and typing in what I want. So once you go and create a dashboard, the next step is to go and populate it with what we call widgets. So to access your apps or your tools in 3D Experience, you go to this compass up on the left of your interface. So going to our compass, we can go to our different quadrants here. I'm going to go up to my social and collaborative. And as I scroll down, I see a list of the apps or tools that are available to me. And we notice that some of them have an arrow on the top right of it where others don't. That we have the ability to drop it as a widget. And to do that, we just drag and drop it onto our interface. And we see two hash boxes that shows where we're gonna be placing this. And as I drop it, we see it populates. And that's not the only way to drop a widget. You can also, if I was to go to 3D search, I can drop a search widget here essentially, and I can do a search from here and populate it. Or I could pull a search from my apps. And we see it's here. So we see that we do have the arrow here, but if I do click on it, we see that the, po the page just gets populated with that app. So I'll go and search this part. Now I can choose to drag and drop this 
onto my 3D Play and populate it with this part. But first, I can also pin it to my dashboard. So once I choose to pin it, I can choose which dashboard, dashboard I want to pin it to or which tab in that dashboard. And I'm just going to go and say Add. And we see automatically my search is pinned to my dashboard. And to populate this app, like I said before, we can either drag and drop a part from search or we can drag and, drag and drop it from this pin search. So we add, add objects here. Let me see as I drop it in there, my tree gets populated and then my 3D will get populated. While we wait for that to load, we're gonna go and search some, some more objects. So we'll see if I search blue car, I can go and grab it directly from this non-persistent search. And you see once I drag, that search goes away. And we see the object is loaded up. And the convenient thing about the product structure explorer is it essentially allows you to get a high level just view of your part or your assembly. It also allows you to see it within the context of other assemblies. So we have the, both this part and the car loaded up at the same time in this environment. And we can go and simultaneously look at our tree and our parts in real time. And also with cross highlighting capability. So <clears throat> I can click either in my tree and we see a cross highlight in our 3D, or I can click in our 3D and we see a cross highlight in our tree. This helps, helps us navigate on specific data. So if I wanted to get to this rim, I can say focus on, and it zooms directly into the rim and then it also expands down to that level in our tree. And what's more using our context menu, which is the menu that pops up if you click anything, or it's basically a menu that uh, offers you options based on the context of what you're selecting. So since I'm selecting this object in this app, it's saying that maybe I want to use level selector. And what this is, is basically a ladder tool that as you go up the rungs of the ladder, it highlights the next parent subassembly until you get to the root. So this allows you just to select up your tree. Some other tools that are available to you in Product Structure Explore. We'll start in your tree menu. You basically have your view tools that allow you to manipulate how you're viewing your tree. And then your selection tools here. And then we'll review the tools of both of these together. But first, we'll take a look at the view tools in product in the, in the 3D window of our Product Explore. And we, here we see our typical view tools. You have your fit all in. You can change between parallel and perspective views. And then you have your typical pan, rotate, and zoom. And if you're familiar with Katia V5 and the mouse manipulator commands where you use the center button to pan and zoom in and out and rotate, that is also still available in this interface. And you do get your options to switch between your different uh, material or visualizations. Then of course you got your access to your main views, your primary views. You can go and toggle any wireframes that might be in the model by toggling hide show lines, points, or reference axes. And then you can also toggle your hide show view, which let's imagine if we went and took this front wheel assembly and hit it in our 3D. We can remove that from our view or isolate it because if we switch to our no show view, this swaps our visible space and allows us to see everything that we hid. So now we can either look at this alone or we can go back to our tree using cross highlight and our level selector to select the entire level of front wheel assembly and then toggle the hide show and now we have it back available to us so I wanted to look at the tools together because they're essentially the same between them going from left to right we have our properties which allows us to view the metadata on our parts, so who made it, when it was made, when it was modified, etc. You could view related objects, so you can view if there are links between objects, also parent-child relationships, and then also uh, any extra documentation such as reviews, markups, engineering documents. So that gets into that interconnectivity that I was talking about. Since all of your data is interconnected, you need an efficient way to find what's connected to what. So you can look on your tree, and choose a specific object and choose related objects and it'll bring up a window that'll bring up all the parents and children 
and anything associated with that model. So if I go and hit the rim assembly and hit explore related objects, we get a new window with the 3D shape at the, uh, the lower geometry level of the 19 inch rim, and then the parent being the sub assembly. And double clicking on that, we can see children of that sub assembly. You can essentially just go up the tree until you get to your root object. And then from here, you can choose to multi-select or just single select and then probe data in specific ways. So you can say open with, you know, and it gives you some options for some apps you can open it with. And once again, same as the other widgets, we have the ability to pin this to our dashboard. If we did so choose to. Then a final note on uh, some widgets and being able to move them around. If you noticed during this entire presentation, I've been moving these widgets around and resizing them pretty, pretty at will. Uh, and that is specific to the design. They want to make it so you can customize this dashboard and make it your own. So I can look at multiple widgets at once, or I can choose to maximize it and have a single widget take over the entire screen. We also apply filters to our assemblies based on specific criteria, such as selection, volume, uh, and attributes. Uh, in our 3D, we can measure the model. Obviously, we can't measure in our tree. There's nothing to measure. And then also available to us in our 3D is a section. Then this is your option to just toggle the uh, section plane. And then you can choose to print your data. So you can export over here in your tree. You can export your tree to a CSV file. Or you can print a screen grab of, let's say, maybe you cut a section and then grab a measurement. And then when you say print, you get a pop-up window that allows you to save to a specific format, either as PDF or send it to an actual physical printer. So next, we're going to take a look at some other tools that are available to you specifically ones that we can view the markups and also create some of our own. So we're going to hide our product structure, our product structure explorer for right now, and then also this search results. We're going to go and delete that search results because I actually do have a tab specific for searches. So we can see that we can drop the same app or widget multiple times and have different data in it. So I have about five searches here, all with different data that I'm looking up. So let's see what's available to us while doing that. So first I'm going to take a look at the 3D Play app. I'm going to go and drag and drop this into our interface. I'm going to drag and drop a couple versions of it. So we're going to first start out by grabbing one of our products. And I'm going to scroll over and check which re revision I want. I want to grab the C revision. And I'm just going to go and drag and drop this right from this tab. Hover over our demo tab until we're in it. And then once we're in our demo tab, hover over 3D Play, drag and drop it into there. And now this part is dropped, I want to add some other parts into these 3D plays. So I'm going to go back to my searches and I want to first see my drawing. So I'm going to grab this drawing of this part, drag and drop it into this 3D play widget. And here we see our drawing views come up. And then finally, I'm going to go and grab design review. We can go and toggle through our review options. So within our markups, we have an image. Then we have a note saying refer to hyperlink. And this hyperlink here, this is a hyperlink that will bring us to Stone website. So we click it. We're automatically brought to that hyperlink page. And then going to our other design review slide, we can check and see 
We have some markups here, a minimum distance, some arrow callout, and then a new geometry callout. We can also look at some other data as well using our 3D play. So we saw our base review, or our design review, sorry, our design review here. And then looking at our part, if we go into our scenario chooser, we can choose different ways to navigate the model, but we can also choose 3D tolerancing and annotation. So if you're working with a company that deals with 3D tolerances and callouts and PMI data, you can view this directly within this interface and you could toggle through your views And then finally, we can look at our drawing within the 3D Play widget. So within our drawing, we got our typical zoom in and out, fit all in, and pan commands. You can also zoom in, zoom out incrementally. And then if there are multiple sheets on the drawing, you can toggle between sheets. And then finally, I'm gonna just make a note on the drawing, uh, on this drawing view. So within 3D Play, you have the option to mark up or create annotations. So using this pencil tool, we get a new toolbar on our right that allows us to choose either freehand, text, erase, or utilize a color wheel. So whatever color we choose, that's going to be the color of our text or annotation. And we notice that if I make some shapes, it kind of redesigns it for me and cleans it up a little bit. If we choose to go and erase, we just hover over the objects we want to erase. And then using the text callout, we can make some annotations. And then by pressing and by holding enter or sorry, by holding shift and pressing enter, we can drop to a new line. And then clicking validate to validate our annotation. And let's make an arrow. And once you make your annotations, let me just make one more on this other sheet just to showcase some extra features. I'm just gonna make a circular call out here. So once you make your annotations on your drawings, you have the ability to go through and toggle between them. So hitting this button here, using annotation tour, we could toggle between our different annotations. And once we're toggling with them, you can choose to share this information by, you get a couple options. So if you want to share internally to the platform, you can share to what's called 3D Swim. And it's essentially a, <clears throat> 3D Swim is essentially a forum page, if you will, uh, that can be set up for, you know, groups of users, uh, teams within a company or an entire company. And this allows you, uh, it's an area where you can post links, articles, images, requests, and, um, you know, collaborate in that way. You can also choose to save your screenshot. This will download a version of uh, just a PNG right to your local drive into your downloads. Just double clicking that. We get our image here and it just does it one by one. So whatever annotation you're on, that's the one it's going to print. And then finally, we also have the print screenshot option to export to PDF or to print to a physical machine. And just know that <clears throat> in our 3D version of this or in our the same 3D Play app, but if we're viewing a 3D part, we still have similar tools available to us, such as those annotations and exporting those annotations. Now, <clears throat> at this step, we're going to be looking at these tools for this 3D Play. Uh, but first, we're going to load up a 3D markup because it's very similar to the 3D Play app. It has some very specific uh, variances in the functionality that I want to touch on. So first, we're going to restore this product structure explorer window. And the reason why I like to have this here is it basically just has a tree of your parts that are relevant to you. So instead of dropping, you know, multiple searches of the parts you're interested in, you can kind of drop them all into this tree. And then if you want to use it for later, I can grab like say blue car and drag it into my 3D play and it'll load it up.
So as I said, I wanted to look at 3D play versus 3D markup. So I'm going to go and grab a 3D markup widget. I'm going to my northern quadrant and finding 3D markup. And then just dragging and dropping into my interface. Then I'm going to move these other widgets around so I can have these sit side by side. There we go, that's good enough. So in our widget, we see it's available that we can search for content, uh, which will automatically just open up a 3D search for us, or we can drop content here. So just like we did with our 3D play, we're gonna drag and drop our blue car right into this interface. And so when we're looking at 3D markup and 3D play, um, they're, these widgets primary functions is to allow for uh, viewing the model of course, but uh, also, uh, you know, probing it, grabbing measurements, cutting sections. But the biggest thing is the markups that you can make on these parts and these models, and then how you distribute those markups. So just like we saw in, uh, in 3D Play, you do have access to your annotations your 3D tolerancing annotations. This one doesn't have, this. the blue card doesn't have any annotations in it, but if it did, you could toggle through it by going to the annotations tab and then choosing to view your annotations and display your annotation sets. And from there you can filter your annotations and then show the, uh, show the thumbnails on them. Where in 3D Play, to view the same data, you would go to your experience chooser or your scenario chooser and choose 3D tolerancing annotation. So looking at our markups, as we go into our 3D play, you know, you got your hide show view. I'll go tools over here as well. So comparing and contrasting between the two, uh, you got your hide show button here under your tools. In, uh, for your 3D markup, it's in your view. And then in uh, 3D Play, you can choose to explode the model. So by hitting the explode button and moving, moving this bar here up the tree, it, uh, it explodes it out and uh, it varies in how much it's exploding or how, how much it's coming out from center. And in, uh, in 3D Markup, we do not have that option. So if you want to look at an exploded model of your part, 3D Play is where you're going to want to go. So in both versions, we can access, or in both widgets, we can access tools such as Measure. So in 3D Play, if we choose to measure, we can select a point. We can go point to point in our measurements. Let me expand out. So we'll see it just says select a point and select another point. So we get kind of a rough measurement tool here. But if we go into our 3D markup, we see we have a little bit stronger of a tool. We can measure the thickness of a single part or measure the thickness of an object. So if you select a part and then highlight over a specific face, then it'll show you the thickness relevant to that face. But if we go into our actual measuring tool, we'll see now that instead of it saying select a point, it's saying select an uh, item to measure using filters if needed. So if we look down here, we see we have a little bit more robustness in this widget because we have the ability to select on filters for specific geometries. So if I select point, it's only gonna allow me to select points. Same thing with like arc center. It'll only grab arc center. So if I start hovering over arcs, we see a center point start to populate. So I can hit this arc and then this arc. Now we get an actual center distance between our two wheels.
And we also have our section view available to us here with the same buttons for create the section then also toggle the section plane. And the sectioning tool is just very similar. It's the same thing in 3D Play. You get your plane view here and you get a bar that you can toggle instead of dragging. You can also manipulate your view using your robot. You can rotate it in any direction. And then from there you can proceed to grab measurements against that section. So now looking at our markup tools, in 3D Play of course we have this drawing tool along with our annotations, our rich texts. In 3D Markup it's a little bit more robust. So in 3D Markup we have the ability to create what's called a markup. And if we go and select the markup button, we see that we hit, we get a window that pops up that asks us to create a title and create a description and, you know, create, ultimately create the markup. So what this is doing is it's creating a physical object in the database that is this markup. So I can have this view here. I can create a new markup. And then what we'll see is within our annotation tools, we still have the ability to create an arrow, create some geometry. So we create a circle there. We can also create a rectangle or use our freehand like we see in our um, in our 3D play. So and then within our freehand we have the ability to make a general markup, such as an arrow call out and a circle. Or we can choose to use a highlighter. There we can toggle and choose to highlight something that we want to call out. And then to erase it, it, they're actually physical objects. So I can go and click each one and hit my delete key. And those geometries will be removed. And then we can either choose to update our slide if we you know, rotate our view or add something to it. And it says update viewpoint. Or we can choose to delete it by using this down arrow here and saying delete. So I'm going to grab an older markup that I made and just show now that uh, using our 3D play, we can view markups. So I'm just going to maximize this base review here. And then I'm going to go over to my searches. I'm just going to grab this markup that I did on that other part, drag and drop it into this interface. And with that restore down. And while that's loading, I'm just going to make a, another quick note on these markups. So with our text markups, we have some more options here too. So within 3D Play, we were, we were only able to set a text, but here we can set a text, a picture, and then the 2D versions of those. So if we go and set a text, we can choose a point to specifically place it on, and then we can go in and fill in that text. And now we see this text call out is a leader with an arrow, it's more robust, uh, whereas the other one was just floating and we could only kind of set it in one position where we can now move this around. And then also, by selecting the flag, we have options to manipulate the leader type, the font, the text size, and then the coloring around this call out. So I'll go get a new tab, drop a 3D play onto it. Then I'm going to go and search for my content. And I just want to see all the markups I've created. So I'm going to grab 6W tags and search for markup. And then under type we have markups. And here we have five. So here's the one I just created.
So then we see we have this markup here. And now finally, I'm just gonna to touch on the sharing capability within 3D markup. So within 3D play, we had the ability to share to our internal networks into 3D swim or to save locally onto our machine. And with 3D markup, we have the ability, we have the ability to print our views to share them internally. Um, and so once you print that, you can print to PDF or you print to a physical copy and then share it using your own internal methods. Or if you go into markup, you have these two options on the end here. And we'll maximize it. And these two options are issue and change action. So what we can do with these markups, now that we've created this markup and it's an, it's an entity in our database, we can choose to do something with that markup and uh, progress that action. So we can say, we can write this markup and you know write an issue against it saying you know this is a problem we need to fix it and then from there you can assign a user to it or a group and then uh, create a whole sign-off process in order to resolve that issue uh, and within that issue though is likely going to be a change action so uh, let's imagine you know that we don't we already know what the issue is the issue has already been called out and right now we just need a, um, a method or we just need to proceed with fixing the data or making that change. So at that step, what you would do is we can create a change action against these markups. So we can create markups saying, you know, change X, Y, Z in this part, change these dimensions. And then from this, and we could all do that right in this markup tool and then create a change action right against that markup. So directly within this interface, creating either an issue or change action, we can assign a user to it. And then, uh, so everyone is now notified that this is, exists as one of these objects. And then also there's, you know, scheduling against it as well. So it will, depending on how, uh, how your data is set up and if your schedules and, you know, your deadlines and for all your parts are within the database, you can set that up and then that and then these issues and change actions can be written against that and you possibly push timelines out or allow you to see a full view of how this issue or change action may affect your final schedule. So now let's consider the scenario where we want to share data with an outside source or an outside company, outside user, basically somebody who just doesn't have the licensing or software for 3D experience, but we still want to share the data with them. Now, we can share screen grabs and screenshots and other 2Ds like we saw within the platform, but with the 3D XML, which is the native format for 3D experience data, this offers you some extra options. So with your 3D XMLs, you can download a free 3D XML player. And what this is, is just a standalone software that allows you to open your data just like 3D Play in a lightweight format. It's going to be most similar to your 3D play. So we see here we have our data. We have the ability to go and rotate it around. And then also our typical viewing tools are still here. We can change between our different shadings and some also some rendering options that we can choose from. And we could also see our functional tolerancing annotations or our 3D annotations. And we still have the ability to toggle through those. Now, along with that standalone player, the 3D, the 3D XML player software allows it so that these 3D XMLs can now be compatible with Microsoft products. So not only can you take this data, send it to someone, and they can open it with the 3D, MX 3D XML player, but they can also, you can also take this part and place it into a PowerPoint presentation or Microsoft document and send it along with those documents so you can go and view that data within a presentation. So we see once I drag and drop this part, it shows up as a Dassault Systems logo. And I'll go full screen real quick. And I'll expand this out to take up 
more of the screen. We'll see once I double click it, it goes into my part data and loads up that part for us. And once again, so it's the same viewer as the lightweight standalone software, but now it's just embedded into our Microsoft applications. And one final note I'm going to make on the 3D XMLs and 3D experience and sharing within the platform and also externally. So for the users that don't have a license that you want to export data to and share with, you do also have the option to create a guest account for those users where they'll have temporary and limited access to specifically the, only the data you share with them. So it'll allow them to get onto the platform similar to how we we're looking before through web apps and do similar probing and viewing and also markups. That will conclude this. And that will conclude today's webinar. Please, if you have any further questions or follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out at cati.com or call the number provided at the bottom of the screen. Thank you.